Pal here with more Space Engineers, and today we are going to work on this piece and start getting the armor shroud on, which means, yes, we're going to be doing time lapse. <laughs> All right, so for those who were, I was discussing it with last time, um, air tightness. After the, after rebooting the game, as you can tell, Air tightness detection is working, um, so we'll we'll leave it as it is for now. I uh, just want to show you guys that yeah, it did actually uh, end up holding an atmosphere once we reset. And like I said, it was basically just the uh, the way that the detection works that was causing the problem. So all right, so now we're gonna open up a hole. <laughs> Now, I don't know if we're going to take out the entire wall here, which is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, and then what I'm thinking is maybe we bring this back like a so. Two, three. I mean, I could even move that in a couple of blocks. So if we did one, two, three, four, five. So if we did something like that, it would actually close off all of this. And so what I'm thinking here is that we end up with a, uh, that would give us enough room that if we wanted to put a couple of more reactors back here we'd be able to get a couple of reactors in at least and then we go on one two three four five two three four five two three four five so it'd be two reactors two large reactors and then we could have a, a giant array of them if we need them. So just trying to just trying to make sure we actually have enough room to get things done. Uh, it also mean that we can close this in. We're gonna do the same on this side. So. So what we're probably going to end up with is the shroud that we were talking about before where we were going to have something like this basically fold over everything. We're prob oh, come here. probably going to have it come back to a certain point. Um,
Oh. All right. So those may actually come up a couple of blocks. Um, so we'll see how that actually, how that plays out. Oh, just making some notes here. For uh, some future ideas here while we're in the time lapse. Okay, so what I'm thinking is the overall armor, like when we start dealing with the exterior armor here, is going to smooth down into into this area. These will probably come up over the windows. I don't know yet. Um, what I'll do is I'll probably leave these where they are for right now while we figure out what our lines are going to look like when we're, we actually start getting in here and putting the armor in. Um, because they really are just kind of emergency panels. They're not really meant to carry much of a load. But if we're doing that, let's go... So you go two blocks above, one block in. Right? Yeah, okay. Come on. And this is just being used as a spacer. We're just using it to measure the uh, the distance here, so we know how far out the shroud has to come. Oh, I went two blocks up. All right, that's fine because we need that to be down here anyway. And then from there, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then that is the exterior. So how's that going? It would help if the sun would cooperate with us, right? All right, so... Yeah, that should work. So we're going to have to get some power here quickly. All right. So you guys are going to go from there down. So yeah, like I said, that gets us an idea of what the shroud needs to look like space-wise. Um, obviously, it's not going to just be giant flat spaces. We're going to do cut-ins and cut-outs and stuff. Projections off of it. But that should get us pretty close to where we need it to be. Um, it's very possible that the solar panels that we have, that entire that entire solar panel array, may move further aft. They may actually move forward. Uh, one of the things that I had been thinking about was actually putting them over the hangar space, embed them in the heavy armor there, um, and then we put the shield emitter up under the um, uh, bridge. I mean, we could always put it on top of the bridge. But what I'm thinking is that we're going to actually have two emitters on the ship. That way we have, you know, we have a backup system. 
Which, if I do that, if we put, we could put one emitter under the bridge, and then one on that aft section between the thruster nacelles. I'm thinking those thruster nacelles need to be wider, though. Because if I basically double the width of those, I can get one more set of uh, thrusters in. And I think overall, proportionally, it'll look a little bit better. And then we do negative space in between the two thrusters. Yeah, I actually think I like the way that that... All right, so we've, we're full up. So here's what I'm thinking. If we bring this entire thing up, two, three, to this height, Yeah, let me show you here. And then that folds in to the rest of that armor. There. So that folds, that becomes the vent system that we were talking about, the giant scoop looking thing. So basically this line all moves up. We can then have it taper back out to here, um, which would be, should be there, I think. As you said, nine, 10, 11, 12, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 9 there. That's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right. Five, Five counting that. One, two, three, four. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, to there. But that also means that the height of this thing becomes kind of ridiculous. I really should put a, uh, an access port in there. All right. And so that means Yeah, and keep in mind that it won't it won't be this boxy. It will taper. Um, it'll it'll slide down here. We're just trying to get an idea of what this may look like if we did this. So basically, all of that, like this entire structure, would shift up with that little vertical becoming slightly larger. See, the problem is I actually like the proportions that we have right now. So this will have to shift out to probably here. Somewhere along that line. But that all shifts up and comes back. That runs straight for about half or so and then slopes down. Okay. I think I have an idea on that. So that gets us where that's going to be. Um, so I think what we'll do 
is let's go ahead switch us over to the heavy armor blocks and we'll start reproducing this whole thing in heavy in heavy armor so we're gonna bring you back one two three this down and you are going to be there yeah? one two one two which means you should hopefully match up Okay, so you're going to be an interior structure piece, and you're going to be eventually armor. Alright, so that gives us an idea of basically what we're looking at. Um, So that gets us the idea of where we need everything to be. Which means now it's time to basically recreate this up here. So that went two blocks down. And then it just, we went, which way did we go with this? We went two blocks back. Uh -huh. Which means you then are going to go that way. We did that one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so if we do that for uh, we'll go six, I think. takes it back into roughly where we were looking for and then the upper side will carry back and like I said what we're gonna do is we're gonna encase all of this with uh, heavy armor blocks all right and right, so that's one So you're actually going to be there, and that means you get cut there. You're one, two, three in. It's one. So 
So if we go one, two. Oh, our lines, our line is off here a little bit. All right. Come on. Not there. So we do that. It's going to go one, two. And we did what? Two on there? So third one in. Three. So we're going to have two layers of armor here. So you're actually going to be the edge of the vent. And then that's going to come Energy all the way down. Okay. And that should give us the basic lines of what we're looking for, I hope. We'll see how this all plays out. Uh. a little bit of this in. So that's going to cut back. This will fold over. Yeah, I think that'll work. Hi all. All right. So. <laughs> Um, I took a couple of days off because we started the time lapse. We recorded, oh, I don't know, I want to say something like close to two hours worth of footage. Um, it was almost 200 gigs, somewhere around there, like 175, somewhere. Anyway, um, and Windows crashed. <laughs> so we've gotten... A bit done, um, not nearly as much as I would have liked, but we did get a bunch of stuff done. Let me show you here. <sighs> yeah, I, I actually thought about reverting back to an older save, um, but I was so frustrated <laughs> with Windows. I just said the hell with it, shut it down for the day, and uh, yeah, we're like a day and a half later now. <laughs> oh, so, um, yeah, what we did is we went ahead and scaled up the armor envelope that we were talking about, the shrouding. And when I was doing all of this, I realized that because of the way things were done, the scaling was a little bit off. So the sides of what will be the the, uh, the simulated intake areas actually cut into the hangar space um, that far, actually. So I'm going to have to modify the interior space a little bit to account for this. Um, so what I'm thinking, or what I'm hoping, I should say, is that we'll be able to make this work without it being too noticeable on the interior. Um, I may end up having to sacrifice a block or two in here but I think I can get it all to fit here, actually going to come out to come here there I think I can get it all to fit pretty nicely without it being um, too obvious but we'll see how that all plays out now some changes that we ended up making to the general design 
there we go, is originally I had this spaced out so the wall would have been at this area. Um, but like I said, with the way everything came together, the scale was just off a little bit. So what I'm going to do is actually move the wall over so it'll actually be coming out here. Uh, should be... Somewhere around there. Because you're going to be the two part and then down. So you should be here. So basically it's going to cut in here, I think. Oh, hello. You're completely missing a block. There we are. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking we'll do that with where the wall will be two blocks wide and it comes down at that point. Uh, maybe here. So, yeah, it's going to be like this. And I may come back and clean all of this up so that it blends in a little bit better where maybe it's curved. I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, so that'll end up being two blocks wide. And then this will be two blocks as well. There we go. And then we'll have this actually blend into the, the hull of the, the ship. Um, I may actually just have this wrap through. I haven't decided yet on how I'm going to handle this. Um, I may just Go ahead and do a, a flat wall up um, and then we'll do some texture work in here. Why are I here grinding? What are you grinding? Right. Anyway, uh, so yeah, but that'll end up being the shroud. And what we did is um, I, I'm going to go ahead and tie this across. Now I may, I haven't decided yet on this. I may, if I do separate it, I may do something like that. So this, so that the shroud is actually, that the thruster nacelle area is actually its own little thing armor wise, visually. I haven't decided yet. Um, but for now, we'll go ahead and leave those connected. And then we'll eventually be duplicating what we have over here on that side. Uh, it's been a long day. It's actually been a long couple of days. So one of the other things that we've done, because I had a couple people asking how we were going to handle lateral thrust. And it's going to be a lot of thrusters. So one of the things I talked about in the first part of this video was potentially making you know, uh, hiding more reactors on board. And the more I'm the more I'm working through things, the more likely that is going to become because we're already at the point where the main thruster lines are basically eating any power we can throw into the system. And we're not even halfway done with like thruster placement and such. So what I'm going to need to do is sit down look at the the number of thrusters and have to do some math to figure out how many uh, reactors we need and that's going to dictate probably what we're going to end up with here and because one of i'm talking about well for you guys a few minutes ago <laughs> was using this area for an extension on uh, power generation and so i'm thinking that's going to become a reality 
unfortunately. Um, the other thing that I could do, and I, I am seriously considering this, is we have these giant holes where the nacelle is going to be, right? Because we're going to have this big intake area. Basically, all of this space in here is kind of dead space. Let's, in fact, take some of this out. And so what I'm thinking is, if you remember, I was talking about having, you know, basically have a, a hallway or something in here. And we could actually end up turning this into uh, additional power groups. So we have maybe, say, four or eight reactors. Actually, how many can we get in here? I mean, these things are tiny. So if we were to go, I uh, actually need to turn Bob off for a second because he's going to go crazy if I try and do this. I don't want a bunch of extra spare parts in my, <laughs> my inventory. I've already got enough. I don't need more. Right. Let's turn Bob off, let him calm down. Uh, I should have this one. I should have a panel here somewhere. Right. Uh, we have the Builder Bobs. Okay. So we'll turn all of that off for a second. So what I'm thinking here is this is enough room to walk through. So if we go... Let's see. That's going to be the exterior wall from the shroud and so this will be a block there I'll probably bring that out another block yeah I may bring that out another block if I bring that one or two blocks out to say there, that gives me enough to do a block of heavy armor and still be able to keep that out there. All right. So mental note for me for later. So if we're doing that, that means this ends up being the wall, block of armor, two spaces out. All right, uh, because this is going to be reactors, let's go interior wall will be here. And then that gives us two levels of armor on it, which is good because it's reactor. Well, potentially it's a reactor room. All right, so if we do this, And there's two blocks there, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so what I'm thinking is, is that we then, do we want to replace the floor? I don't know if I'm going to replace the floor or not. I might. So let's go, if we do, Energy low. we do the reactors, we can say, we're going to end up with this being the face so that'll be an exterior wall of some kind and I 
what I'll do is I'll replace the inner wall with heavy armor blocks. Just to have them there. Uh, and how many of these? All right. Won't be able to get in there, but that's okay. I mean, I could try and move stuff forward one. No, the wall's gonna move back. All right, so that'll be the face. Let's do this then. Energy critical. Right. Okay, and so what I'm thinking here is that if we do this, this gets us, you know, a ridiculous number of reactors. Basically, this puts us at 12 reactors just here. And then we'll have that'll end up with 12 more on the other side for 24 reactors, plus the stuff we have back in the actual engine room. Um, and what I can do is these will obviously be tied into all of our maintenance and management stuff. Um, and what I'm thinking is. We'll have a display board in here. Uh, actually, so we could have a display board over here that says, you know, that talks about reactors one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. No oh, crud. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I've been thinking about. It's like just the mass of the ship has gotten to the point where it's you know because we're going to need more thrusters which add mass and etc etc it just kind of steamrolls but i am happy with the or i am happier with the way that the entire shroud idea came together um and i think that once we get things a little bit further along and you can actually see where we're going with it hopefully you can see where we're going other than now but i think that uh this might be a solution to the power because originally this was a ship that was you know just kind of gonna slow boat places but the more we add to it and the more we're doing with it it's just kind of expanding over time and so that's where my my thought process is with it now ah <sighs> so i just need to get the rest of the shroud in <laughs> I want to get so what I'm going to work on this week is getting the shroud done. Once we have the shroud done, uh, like I said, we can start looking at that upper area. Um, I've, if I can avoid using that area for the reactors, I would be much happier. Mainly, what we're what I'm thinking at this point is the uh the thrusters like these nacelles will actually carry all the way back into the what we have here the stylized thing so it'll kind of slope down over time um gradually slope down and then the centerpiece i think we're gonna have a more a uh, more severe sloping so that this will all be mostly smooth. It'll plunge down here. And then I do think what we're gonna do is raise these up one or two blocks. Yeah, so it effectively will be, they'll be at this level. Um, and then we'll have another layer of armor blocks under it. All right, that's gonna do it for us today. Uh, hopefully everybody has a fantastic day. Enjoy the rest of your week. 
And we'll see you back here on Wednesday for more uh, Space Engineers. As always, folks, take care and be safe out there, everybody. Uh, this ship is just driving me mad. Mad, I say. <laughs> and of course, if we've got the, the shroud going that high, we could probably space the uh, thrusters out a little bit more. I don't know. I have to. I have to play around with some angles and see which way it works best. Ah, still, so much more to do. 